Everybody's hot. But on a on a climatic uh, level, there's been this is almost like a, a new record of the temperatures we're seeing. Indeed, 2023, I'm told globally, was the hottest year since record started. And this is with climatic data for 122 years. So we're talking about 1901. From 1901 till today, last year was the hottest year on record. And this year is threatening to be worse because temperatures, particularly within uh, the, 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 actually everywhere, because I've read stories in India, France, UK, East Africa, South Sudan, West Africa, or in fact Germany, all saying that this this year, in the, this February till April, has been very very hot. Indeed, for those in the temperate zones, this summer is predicted to be one of the hottest. And what's happening is that the heat has even started before summer. So typically, you are in spring in a temperate climate. But it's extremely hot. Now, the thing about this heat is that, well, there are health implications in terms of sunstroke and people dying of excessive heat. That really hasn't happened in West Africa, but happens in some parts of the world. Then there's also the need for more energy. Air conditioning in your car. You need air conditioning in your buildings. And this is the same period where we're having power challenges. So you notice that people spend more power to heat their rooms, to heat their cars. And there's also going to be uh, an effect on food production because the hotter it is, the different the, 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 the requirements for growing food. And if it's hot and it's not raining, you're going to have challenges with food. Your water bodies are drying up. So this is not just a, a feel-good topic. It's actually a very serious issue. What does El Nino mean? For even cocoa, because as we know, this has been one of our worst years of cocoa output in decades, partly because of El Nino, in addition to the swollen shoot virus disease. So we'll talk about that. How hot has it been, Sky? On Sunday, I came from church, entered my car. By the way, I opened the car window and I parked it because I don't... I've been told not to... If you park the car in heat, yeah, you need to leave spaces yes. around. So I, I left, I left spaces the in the glass. Okay. Later, when I sat in the car, the temperature reading outside was forty-two degrees Celsius. <laughs> forty-two <laughs> degrees Celsius, and I drove for like thirty minutes with full AC, AC on low, that's the lowest temperature below fourteen degrees, and having driven for like thirty minutes, it still recorded the air temperature outside at thirty-nine degrees. Oh. 39 degrees Celsius. That, I mean, it's serious. Because if you look at the, the forecast for Ghana for the past 10 years, average is 32 to 38. So we are around 34, 35, 36. To have about 40 is serious. For the first time I experienced 40 degrees Celsius was in 2007 when I went to Dubai. Mm-hmm. When I entered Dubai, <laughs> it was like I was in an oven. <laughs> but that was not humidity hot. It was just dry hot. Yeah. You know, and by the way, when it's humid and hot, it's worse than when it's just dry and hot. You know, so like if you are hot in a forest, if you are hot in a forest zone, you feel much worse than if you are hot, say, I don't know, in a different place. So it's something we need to think about. But when we went for the uh, back to the, your village food festival, oh my mm-hmm. god, oh, oh my god! But at, at the point, I was asking myself, why is it me, me alone? Everybody now was now complaining. That oh yeah, it I was, was it on was... water constantly mm-hmm. because you could feel the heat, like it was so hot. Like I was asking myself, ah, who is on duty in heaven to yes. do yes. <laughs> yes. And it's happened like that for the past you know past few days. Yeah. It's, 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 it's been like that. And then also when you read international news reports from uh, Sudan, South mm-hmm. Sudan, and, 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 and these other African countries close to the Sahara, mm-hmm. uh, you get the impression that, look, things are boiling Even over. Even India. Yeah. Let me read a story from India for you. Like, this is... Like, this is... Um, okay, there's one from East Africa mm-hmm. that, that, that describe, is described as a heat wave. Then in India, the story says that they are having the hottest... This is Forbes India. The hottest uh, April since records started. Wow. It said summer and monsoon remain critical in India. Already combating food prices 
led inflation rise and which the two main staples are staring at an uncertainty as imd's forecast isn't encouraging it says an average of two people lost their lives daily in india due to heat waves in april may and june last year a total of 252 deaths due to heat related issues were reported by june last year a whopping jump from 33 in the same period the previous year in 2023 in fact, 2023 was one of the hottest years in 122 years with El Nino conditions making it worse. Then it talks about 2024. The India Meteorological Department has warned of a sweltering summer with more than the usual number of heat wave days in this session. During April this year, above normal heat wave days are likely over many parts of the southern peninsula adjoining northwest central India, some parts of India and plains of northwest India. Then the cycle of higher number of days of heat waves pose a significant threat to the economy, especially farm income, food price led inflation, and public health conditions. Mm. Prolonged periods of extreme heat are required to be dealt with policy changes as climate change aggravates impacts of other coexisting crises in an economy that is still recovering. Now, let me take you to West Africa. There's a New York Times article on West Africa that talks about the hottest period in. In a long time, mm-hmm. I don't know if you, have, if you have that article. Well, what I have here is um, what they call it, the Verge, saying El Nino expected to smash heat records in 2024. Mm-hmm. El Nino is expected to break temperature records across the globe. New reset forecast. Now, there's a 90% chance that global average surface temperatures will reach a record high for the year leading up to June 2024, according to new research published today in the journal. Now, scientific uh, reports. Now, some places will be more sweltering than mm-hmm. others, mm-hmm. particularly in parts of Asia. The heat has cascading effects, like raising the risk of drought and wildfire. Now, a weather pattern known as El Nino is uh, to blame. El Nino is uh, part of a natural cyclical phenomenon, but climate change heightens the stakes by raising baseline temperatures before El Nino swoops in to push the mercury up even higher. It goes on to provide further details as to you know the level of um, mm. heat waves we will we'll, we'll be, we'll be seeing. Yeah. So let's ask listeners, how are you coping with the heat? I'll do a couple of interviews on this quickly. How are you coping with the heat? Does working from home make anything better? What are your coping mechanisms? The market women, especially those who sell in in the open. open. Mm -hmm. And then those who sell underneath corrugated iron sheets. What about those who even live? You know, when we travel around uh, around the caravan, Mm -hmm. there are people who live in houses with um, roofing sheets as the walls. Mm Imagine living in a house like that. Challenge. It's colder during the night, hotter mm-hmm. during the day. Yeah, it's, 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 it's amazing. But now the story we're talking about, the West Africa one, mm-hmm. there's, there's one here that I, I, I should bring your attention. So it's not a Ghana phenomenon? No, no, no. It's, 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 you know, this story was published on the 24th of March, 2024. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one says that uh, it's actually by Bloomberg. Climate mm-hmm. change worsened West African heat wave. Mm-hmm. Uh, study suggests. And it says that uh, climate change contributed to the dangerous mix of high heat mm-hmm. and humidity that swept through West African countries in February, causing illness and disrupting a football tournament on the continent, according to scientists. They did disrupt the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> no we just had a water break, but the tournament went on for Now, the most severe heat occurred between February 11 to uh, 15, with temperatures rising above 40 degrees Celsius, according to a study by the World Weather Attribution, which does research on recent or current climate uh, events. That's already dangerous just hot mm-hmm. but the apparent temperature which factors um, in uh, humidity to give a measure of what the heat actually feels like hit an average of 50 degrees celsius <laughs> wow the study said now it goes on to provide further uh, you know details in the story so the difference the difference here is that mm-hmm. so there's the air temperature mm-hmm. which is about 40 and then there's something they call the heat index which measures which measures the combined effect of the heat and humidity, and the humidity on your body so the bo- the air temperature can be 40 degrees mm-hmm. now what i've learned from a bit of geography i've learned is that if in a humid environment mm-hmm. the heat index is higher in other words if there's moisture in the environment yeah but it's not just moisture it's stickiness and yep dust and all kinds everything of, in the okay yeah but Dave, you're right humidity is the amount of moisture in the air mm-hmm. So, uh, 40 degrees Celsius air temperature 
can lead to a 50 degree heat effect so or maybe, heat index so is that to mean that the heat is heating up the air particles I which are so. and then it makes you feel uncomfortable uh -huh. okay right? so and for me we are just lucky in ghana that people don't die you know the india story i read 255 people died from heat stroke mm -hmm. last year 2023 in ghana we don't record those things so you don't you don't go to hospital and they say what killed him heat mm -hmm. at least the, the doctors don't tell us it's a public health issue like that mm -hmm. but but it, it is serious in the sense that it can lead to other conditions mm -hmm. all right and then the other point is that i'm told that we don't gather the data enough to even use the word heat wave so i listened to the ghana meteor agency talk a few weeks ago and they said heat wave is not a term they use in ghana climate language mm -hmm. do you get it so they do have temperatures they record which are high but they they shy away from using the expression heat wave but east africa they talk about heat wave because mm -hmm. east africa is much cooler mm -hmm. west africa is already very hot yeah right and the it's funny the further up you go the hotter it becomes mm -hmm. but the further south you come the more uncomfortable it gets so the whole of west africa is like a, an oven so so then if this humidity thing the explanation is anything to go by, yeah. then maybe you have so much water particles in the air yeah and those you know the the, the heat the, or hot temperatures heat them up mm -hmm. so that you feel them a lot more on your body and, and in your nostrils maybe, most likely maybe the scientists yeah. can explain that to me yeah. because i'm looking at another story this one is for, from world weather attribution mm -hmm. And they say that dangerous humid heat in southern west africa about 40 degrees celsius hotter mm -hmm. due to climate change mm -hmm. and it says that the southern coastal zone of west africa also called the guinea zone mm -hmm. experienced abnormal early season heat in february 2024 mm -hmm. a combination of high temperatures and relatively humid air resulted in area average heat index values of about 50 degrees celsius which is classified uh, to be in the danger level mm -hmm. that is associated with a high risk of heat cramps and mm -hmm. heat exhaustion mm -hmm. locally values even entered the level of extreme danger that is associated with high risk of heat stroke with values up to 60 degrees celsius now humid heat waves uh, so they have used the term here heat waves are known to be particularly dangerous while meteorological organizations in ghana and nigeria issued warnings few heat related impacts were reported by the media and government organizations across the guinea zone in february west africa was hit by an unusually intense early season of heat wave with temperatures not normally seen until march or mm -hmm. april recorded now the most severe heat occurred from february 11 to 15 as i mentioned earlier yeah. with temperatures above 40 degrees celsius okay meanwhile the cocoa harvest has been very poor this year partly because of el nino mm -hmm. which el nino is not necessarily heat but it's a weather phenomenon that worsens the to the, the 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 outcomes of climate as we would want it mm -hmm. yep. i'll bring you that shortly i'll do a couple of interviews when i come back on this and by the way if you are still wearing suits to work it just means you probably have air conditioned life no because me, I, I don't see how to the sky is wearing a polo shirt yeah yeah no, of course i mean it was just yesterday i was talking to um someone who works within the the judicial space in in in, in a very influential you, position you uh, about the need for us to review i told you hold on hold on, hold on. i told I, you I, I was agreeing with you the last I told time you. for the need for us to review some Sorry. of the things that the we, we the costumes we take to the, the courtroom the <laughs> from Bena, because honestly it's too much it is just too and much so the courtrooms don't have ac many of the majority of them don't have ACs or where they even have mm. they are not working so you go sometimes they have a fan the family is making noise no, it's doing, Ooh, Ooh, that's right the judge is hot Charlie? The, 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 the litigants themselves are hot the lawyer is it's hot, hot. And yet then, he is compelled they, they by the rules don't be naked in the court. Charlie, to wear the thing and then sweating the handkerchief basar. Pascal, we also need to look at our architecture you see for me you are in a temp a, 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 what do you call it a tropical zone mm -hmm. the glass windows we have don't make sense you need louver blades because louver blades you can open all of it air will blowing mm -hmm. i don't know who went to learn that when you build use this sliding window mm -hmm. the sliding window allows only half of the window frame to mm -hmm. get air mm -hmm. so up initial mm -hmm. you have less air mm -hmm. 
Now, circulation is as important as temperature. Mm -hmm. Most of our houses are now ovens. Mm -hmm. When ECG decides to take their power, Matter every house you can't sleep. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, when we were young, we had windows that you open. Yes. Open from here and mm -hmm. you build a house in the in fact, most houses in Ghana mm -hmm. are built with windows facing the sea. Yeah. So that the air blows in through it. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you are building, you don't just build your house anyhow. Do you get it? So like this house, mm -hmm. the window is supposed to face the south and the north. Mm -hmm. These days people build in any direction and they build with these glass things because of somebody's business. So we are not even architecturally responsive to our own environment. Go, look at the churches. Go to High Street. Mm -hmm. The biggest uh, Anglican church is built like a house in Westminster. Mm -hmm. It's terrible because those buildings are built for cold climate to retain heat. Here you are in Ghana, Anglican church on the High Street, and you've built it like you are building it in uh, UK. It doesn't make sense. You should build in a way that allows the air to flow. You know, so I'm just saying, let's use the heat to, to think better. Remove those things. Eh, Caleb. But I, you know, and on if top your of AC this, is not working, oh, in your car. Oh, see, <laughs> I gave some lady a lift from Pantime. By the time we got to where she was going, uh, she, she was baking. She was Why, so... Your AC was off. Oh, when I off, say, it's <laughs> not working. Your AC is not working. It's not working. What happened? Were you happy I or think... you were cooking here? Because the heat is... <laughs> <laughs> no, by the time she got down, she was grilled. Uh, you know. It was like one day, oh, I made a mistake Maxim, of I'm sorry. asking Richie Mesa to take me in the school <laughs> of <her> to parliament. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie <laughs> of it, man. Yeah, yeah, the West Pass, sad, when man. the car is manual. Yeah. <laughs> a manual car without AC. You know the car when <laughs> you press the clutch and they say, mm. <laughs> that ain't better. Oh, but, uh, but the time I go to Bali, the other, the other question: Why, why are the some of the boats their ACs don't work? No, no, most of them, most of them. But some Ubers, most of them. There, there's a few. But in Ghana, nothing works extra. properly. Why? It'll you go to extra. the UK, US, Canada, Uber pulls up. You see the car. You not better. It will be your dream car, yeah. Mercedes Benz, uh, uh, yeah, Toyota, Toyota. But, but Sky, we, but, we need to look at something. Eh? Uh -huh. When I went to the US, we used to rent a car with a system called Lyft. Mm -hmm. you, you rent a car for three days, and you can drive it anywhere. Mm -hmm. And there's a system that allows you to keep the car in good condition. Mm -hmm. I was asking myself whether the Lyft model will work in Ghana. People will because spoil. Ghanaians, by the way they behave, they he's going to hire your car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He goes spoil him. He goes spoil him. Then he go, he go lie you. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something wrong with the way we live. That aff that makes everything more expensive. Mm. And the regulation is also not that strong, so it Hard. makes things. The sun is too much. Frankly speaking, I was having two hanky. One is here, one is wet, and I have to change the other one, which is very bad and it's very disturbing. I don't know if it's part of the climate change that we normally seen or for, but I can't relate it. The fan is working like it's not working. It's not working like uh, something. So if you have your chances, would you change the fan to an air condition? Yeah, if you have chances, I can change it. Yeah, if I get chance, I can change the air condition. It's better. The current temperature reads around 32 degrees Celsius and many citizens are walking the streets of Accra under the scorching sun. But what does this really mean for them? Most of them are hoping to quench their thirst when they get a very chilled water while all this run quickly to the nearest shelter when they get tired under this particular weather. So this is the expected uh, temperature that we are anticipating for 2024. The head of central analysis at the Ghana Meteorological Department, Felicity Ahiyanyo, is taking a casual look at the data collected from the weather station. She is able to forecast what the entire country will feel like in the coming days, months and for that matter the year 2024 for the coast and part of the uh, the middle sector we are expecting it to respond from uh, 32 all the way to 34 degrees celsius uh, as i showed you from our other machine uh, for the part of the middle into the transition to savannah areas too we are expecting it uh, between that uh, 34 all the way to uh, 36 degrees Celsius over most areas, 38 to 40, yeah, around all these areas. Then if you move up to all these areas, those in Wa, those in Tamale, those in uh, Bolgatanga, Narilugu, Tumu, we're expecting them to have uh, 
extreme of uh, 42 uh, degrees Celsius. So this is for the afternoon. So between 11 to 3 p.m., these temperatures are anticipated to be recorded over most areas across the country. The color code on the map depicts one thing only, hot weather. Felicity is equally feeling the brunt of the harsh temperatures. You can see how I'm sweating because our air conditions are not working and uh, you see that we are in it. And look at how I'm sweating. So you can just imagine if I'm to be here throughout the day for 8 hours for 12 hours. Felicity relies on data collected by Richmond Obin, the principal meteorologist and head of the basic network. We are standing by the Stevenson screen um, in the Stevenson screen, we have uh, thermometers that helps us know the temperatures for the day, how hot or cold the day has been. Data on temperature is collected every three hours from the Stevenson screen. As I open, you see the four thermometers that I mentioned. Um, we have two um, standing upright and two of them lying. And you will say that this is the dry bulb. And then this is the wet bulb. The wet bulb has some water attached to it. So, and the material here is called the muslin and wick. Um, it uses the principle of capillarity. It draws water from the container here, and then the, the, it gets the ball wet. So this temperature and this are not the same. The dry bulb temperature is higher than the the, the wet bulb temperature. On a day that they will read the same, it means that the atmosphere is saturated or the water in this bottle is finished. Then it means that this one too will become a dry bulb. But on a good day, they should be reading differently. This one will read higher than the, dry, the wet bulb. And the difference in them is what helps us to calculate the relative humidity for a particular hour. This is the dry, the maximum thermometer and then this is the minimum the maximum thermometer gives us the highest temperature for the day and then the minimum helps us to measure the lowest temperature the maximum is picked at 6 p.m and then the minimum is picked at 6 a.m so when we take our readings so this is how we come we when we come in first you just look at your temp, the dry bulb first and then as we are talking now it is about 11 a.m here and it's um 32.8 degrees celsius here so i'll write my 32.8 degrees celsius on my card it's 11:42 greenwich meridian time on a wednesday morning but the temperature is heating up many people would have to adopt coping mechanisms what is the measurement telling us uh, the measurement tells us that gradually we the temperatures are a bit on the higher side like if you compare what we are measuring now to probably the rainy season or some years past you see that at 11 a.m where uh, we are thinking that at least now the sun is just going to warm up and then uh, warm up into the day we are expecting high temperatures around midday or after around 1 p.m currently we are recording almost 30, 32 point something 33 degrees celsius as of now so just imagine 11 o'clock giving you 33, then 1 p.m. will be a bit too hot. And so, and um, temperature goes with clouds. Now, we have so much, we have clouds as well. And so what happens is that the clouds form as blankets. So instead of the heat leaving the system, the heat is trapped by the clouds and then so we still stay with the heat. The heat is not able to go out. Taking into account how our city is structured, how urbanization is equally contributing to these factors, how people are cutting down trees. You go to almost every part of Accra, it's becoming like a concrete jungle. <laughs> what is happening? Well, I think um, this question must be given to every Ghanaian to answer, uh, especially those in the helm of affairs. Uh, because um, when some of us who were growing up, uh, you move to certain um, areas, you realize that they have demarcated the place in such a way that you can have some sort of free movement and things. And then when it comes to air circulation too, 
you could say that it's done in such a way that yes the air will also have that free movement but today the story is different that the very structure that was there before some of us were born 40 years back has been changed into something that even you are in a room during the cold season too you don't even feel the cold the whole place is congested you go to the outskirts of Accra where you are supposed to be seeing vegetations but then no uh, in the night you check on the aquapim ridges you can see there are a lot of lights are there because most of the vegetations are uh, taken off and those plots have been turned into residential or commercial uh, things but then we are not thinking about uh, the other uh, effects that we are causing on the environment according to richmond the duration of sunshine is increasingly worrying the sunshine recorder at the station helps him to determine the duration but not the intensity of sunshine we call it a campbell stoke sunshine recorder it helps us measure the duration of the sun not the intensity so it tells us how long so that was Fred Duho's report. Joseph Potifi is with the Ghana Meteorological Agency. We want to just get some thoughts around the temperatures we're recording these past few months, how long they've been with us, and what this means for long-term climate. Mr. Potofi, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So it, we are told that 2023 was the, the hottest year on record globally. Do you have evidence to support this? Very well, we have evidence, yes. And um, what, why, where has this trend come from, and why has it continued to 2024? Um, yes, that, that we can we can say it is by anthropogenic uh, behavior. I mean, the kind of things we are emitting into the atmosphere, and then when they go to the atmosphere, they behave as a film or a block. So, when radiations are going, they send the radiations back. That is one. Secondly, for us in Ghana here currently, we can see it is the apparent movement of the sun. When I say apparent movement of the sun, uh, about two, three months ago, the sun was in the southern hemisphere. No, the sun doesn't move, but the earth's position to the sun is in the southern hemisphere. And then uh, as we go along, it is moving to the northern hemisphere. And you know, we are closer to the equator. And when we are closer to the equator, it means the apparent movement of the sun is always directly on us. And that is why we said normally in in March, March is the hottest month in Ghana. And when you look at the gap balance, they call March as Ucho Krikri. Ucho means something is burning, and it is burning very harsh. So that is month. And as we are going outside the month, we should be expecting it maybe to the third week of April that we can get out of there hot temperatures. Fortunately, the rays are also setting in. So those rays will also subdue the, the, the temperatures that we are having. So we, sh we should expect this. And then hopefully, by two, three weeks time, we should get out of this heat. So what are the average temperature readings for January to March saying? And are those numbers higher than they were in previous years? Uh, not too much. Not too much. Um, for Accra, we can say we've, we've been able to rise up to 33 34 and it has happened before uh in the northern part of the country we moved almost up to 42 44 degrees Celsius. Uh, in the coastal areas yes uh, we experience temperatures between 34 to 31 34 31 32 33 34 so averagely you can see 32 33 but because we are also not getting the how do you call it the cloud cover you see, during the during the Amata, we don't have cloud cover. So when the sun shines and in the night, all the sun evaporates, the sun rays evaporate. So in the night it becomes very cooler. But currently we are having a lot of cloud cover. So when the sun shines during the day, in the night, because we have clouds, the sun will rise, the, the heat will rise, and it will be reflected back by the clouds. So you see that in the night, it becomes very, very warm. We are getting temperatures of twenty seven. 26 in the night, which is not normal. But because of the clouds that we have, when the sun shines in the day and it's radiated back to the earth, to the to the to the atmosphere, the clouds 
and formed something like a film, and they re-radiate it back to us in the night. And that's why we are having that discomfort uh, uh, temperatures. But temperatures are rising, actually. Temperatures are rising. But why aren't the clouds producing rain then? Because if we are in the rainy... Uh, this is pre-rainy season, I guess. The clouds, I'm, I think, should be giving us more rain. Is that what conventional rainfall is? Yes, but they need a lot of moisture. So when the moisture, a lot of moisture goes up, that is where we can get the rain. So we are hoping that uh, now that we are getting the easterly winds, and the easterly winds normally come from the ocean, and the ocean is a mass of a lot of water. So when those winds are blowing and they are carrying the water, they are carrying the moisture into the atmosphere, then we can get the convective clouds, that is the cumulonimbus clouds, the CB clouds, that normally form rains. And that the day and day that we can get our rain. But I believe uh, most 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 cities in Ghana now are experiencing every two other day they are getting rain, especially in the forested areas. Every two other day by two two three PM they will get rain. But will, ours will also come very soon. Why does high humidity make the heat worse? This is what we are told that when there's humidity in the air it makes the heat feel hotter. Is that correct? If it is, why is that the case? It is very, very correct because humidity means there is a lot of moisture. And then with the heat, it's just like when you are boiling water, you cover it. The vapor is harsher. So when there is a lot of humidity and there is a lot of sunshine, uh, it is very, very uncomfortable. Very, very, very uncomfortable. And and that is where normally we say that people have what we call, uh, uh, how do you call it, um, you know, our parents, we, I, have, I, have, I have been arguing that we don't have heat stress and those things in Ghana here. But yes, people are arguing that here. Yeah, but I said, when you go to Tamale, let's let's do this. When you go to Tamale, the temperature can be 40, but the relative humidity can be 23. So there is no way we can get those heat stress. But in case the temperature is 40 and the relative humidity is about 70, then a lot of people will have stress and there are a lot of people complications. So as I said, when you are cooking and then uh, the vapor, the water vapor, when you put your hand inside to burn you, heat, the heat in the water is what is burning you. So for us, fortunately for us, when we have high temperatures, we do tend to have low relative humidity. But along the coast, yes, high temperatures with High relative humidity, as we are experiencing now. Currently, we are having uh, humidity over 70% along the coast. So during the day, if we have temp- high temperatures, it will create a lot of discomfort for us. And then in the night, so because temperatures are around 27, and relative humidity is about 80, it will be very, very more discomfort. I see. Finally, in some countries, when the temperatures are high, there are meteor agencies issue wet warnings tell people to stay indoors, to be hydrated, and that kind of thing. We have I'm not sure we've heard that from, from you, you guys. Is it that our heat doesn't kill? For which reason you don't need to issue any warning? Oh, well, I think, I think in, in February, before we get into March, we issued a bulletin on the, how the temperatures will behave in the country. And then we, had, we put some advisory notes under it. I'm sorry if you didn't get it, but we, we also do that. Uh, the only thing is it doesn't tend to... Um, aggravate too much as in the Western countries because there, there you see the heat rising and then the relative heat is also rising. So that that caused a lot of stress for them. But here, when the heat is rising, relative humidity in some places are very very low, especially during um, January February. We don't have moisture coming in, but the heat the temperatures can rise up to in Accra 30, 30, 34. In the northern part of the country, we can have it 40 to 46. But the relative humidity, as I said will be around 23, 24. In Ghana, will be, in Accra, will be around 40, 45. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter. But when relative humidity is around 80 and temperatures are also around 40, 45, none of us can stay in it. <laughs> thank, you for talking to, th- thank you for talking to us. That was uh, Joseph Potofi, who is uh, uh, one of the chief uh, minds at the Ghana Meteorological Agency. Like comments coming through, how are you coping with the heat? He's confirmed that it's hot. 2022 was the hottest year since record started. It's continued in 2024. I just spoke to Joseph Potofi. I'm going to do another quick interview, but here are some of your reactions. Driving a car without an AC, mm. 
Manuaka that in Tamale. <laughs> that goodness. can be terrible. Hey, Read Tamale. Some comments for me. 054-998-6996 is my WhatsApp number. Good morning, Bernard. Morning. I use Golf 3 diesel without air conditioner. Mm. Okay, Bernard. I'm driving Suzuki Auto 800cc 0.8. Mm -hmm. It's manual or stick. It's very helpful and very economical. The AC works perfectly. Wonderful. I save a lot from my fuel allowances. I have, uh, I save a lot when fuel prices go up because my fuel allowance also goes up. Oh, nice. <laughs> Good for you. Good morning, Bernard. I drive Hyundai i10 manual. I've never filled the gas for the AC. <laughs> and he adds a laughter emoji. Gideon from Sprintex. Let me talk to Professor Chris Gording, mm -hmm. an environmental scientist with special interest in the biodiversity and function of coastal wetlands mm. and freshwater systems. It also has in-depth knowledge of ecosystem functioning and conservation. What on earth is happening with the heat? How can we do, what can we do to survive and to make things better? Prof, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good, mo good morning, Bernard. And good morning to those listeners who cherish you. Wonderful. My, my interview before yours, uh, Mr. Potoff, he says there are two causes for the heat. He says one is human activity and the other is the apparent uh, position of the sun, which was more physics. Let's talk about human activity. How did we get here? We are told 2023 was the hottest year since records started in 1901. That is just incredible. What do you make of that? Well, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, 2024 is going to be hotter than 2023. That is the trend, globally and nationally. Every year is, is hotter than the previous year on average. And I should point out that I just checked the records in January 2021. Accra had a temperature of 39.5 degrees centigrade, which is almost five, seven degrees higher than the, the normal. And it is those spikes which are the problem. But to your substantive question, yes, it's, we have made a mess, uh, as I've been saying for decades now, and uh, we need to solve it. Uh, unfortunately, I was listening on the program, all the points made by your people in the studio, the people who have phoned in and so forth, they're all valid. The way we design our buildings, the trees we, we just decimate, um, the, the space in between buildings. Back in the day, we were supposed to leave 10 feet between your fence wall and the building, i.e. three meters. Now people are building uh, one foot away from the fence wall we have uh, problems of the glass that you're talking about. And maybe, uh, uh, Bernard, I, I don't know if you remember the Legon buildings of old. None of them were air-conditioned. Mm -hmm. They all had these big glass mover blades mounted in wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there was through flow. The point made about orientating your building so you have air through for flow the ventilation is very valid. We are we are we are doing things everything that would make us climate resilient we are not doing. And uh, this is something that uh, we at my institute, uh, Institute for Environment and Sanitation Studies, we sort of anticipated about three uh, five, six years ago and we've developed two projects currently looking at urban heat and health and I'd like to bring in um, an aspect of the difference between the classes of building so if you're in your air-conditioned house and so forth it's only when the power goes off that you have problems but think of the person who is living at Gameshi, or any of these informal settlements that are around Accra, with a tin roof, no ceiling, he can't have proper ventilation because he's afraid someone will steal his thing. The temperature inside that 
basically microwave can reach up above 40 degrees. This is one of the projects that we are working on right now, looking at how we can get um, low-cost initiatives to make living in these type of dwellings better. And we want to get this through interaction with the people because that means we can get solutions that are sustainable. The so, so basically you're saying other thing, the, 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 the response, one of the responses beyond preventing temperatures from going up is even the way we build and live. So this is your project. We'll focus on low-cost housing. That makes it easier to tolerate hotter temperatures. Is, is that the point you just well, made? Well, well it's, it's, it's going to not... We are trying to find out from the people what sort of interventions can be used to make it more tolerable. So we are not looking at building new houses or anything. The houses are there existing. Uh, you know, a so-called low-cost housing in Ghana is not low-cost. So we have to go, what is on the ground? What can we do now? What action can we do now without waiting for some donor to come in with some uh, billion-dollar project to, to fix things? But there's another thing, Bernard, that I want to touch on. You see, your previous speaker talked about the link between temperature and humidity. Yes. Yeah. And that is the problem. You can have a temperature of about 35 degrees, but if you couple it with the high humidity, which we have in Accra because of the proximity to the sea, it gives you a heat index of about 50 degrees. And it can give you, in localized settings, up to 60 degrees. Human beings cannot survive that. So I disagree with the, the comment he made that there's no heat stress in Ghana. We have heat stress. And we know that in Nigeria, during that period, February 11 to 15, there are more uh, patients admitted in a place like Nigeria to heat-related illnesses. The fact is we don't keep proper records. That is that is it. Another part of this project that we're looking at is we're putting monitors on people to find out what their body temperature is because that ultimately is the important thing. Mm. If you are a manual laborer and the temperature is so high that you cannot work four hours in a day because it's simply too hot. The, the, that is your income going. Then there's another aspect, again, your people talked about, which is critical. You have to drink water to rehydrate. Now, the cost of uh, such water has gone through the roof. And you should be drinking at least... Uh, under normal circumstances, you, you and I, who are effectively office workers, maybe three liters, two and a half to three liters a day. But if you're working as a construction laborer, you're going to drink more than that. Then you have to balance. Do I buy more water to drink? Or do I save m money so I can use to buy food or pay my accommodation? So you end up being dehydrated, loss of kidney function, all sorts of medical problems then come as a result of that. So th this is something that all links together, and this is what I've always been saying. We cannot take the climate variability away from issues of health, from education. I mean, if, can you imagine if children had been writing uh, their exams at the peak of the, I think actually they did. Please yeah, correct me. They, they, some some did prior to Easter. Some are writing this week. So. Yeah, but the ones prior, if if you were writing in that period, uh, eleven to fifteenth, or even learning, and with that heat, that is going to affect your concentration. All right, Let, let's you're talk. Writing and you're sweating on the paper, exam paper. You are sweating on both counts. The paper is difficult, and you're also sweating. <laughs> now let let's talk about cutting down trees i oh like my, what, what is the problem is it that our leaders don't understand is it forestry commission why is it that every time you come to 
especially in Accra, there's every, almost every space trees are being cut by heart. I mean, I come to, I come to Legon campus and most of the trees are still there. They've not been touched. But everywhere else, they are just cutting down the trees. What's the problem? Well, well Bernard, um, the thing is we don't value trees. In fact, uh, someone said that if trees could act as Wi-Fi antennas, everybody would be planting more trees. We don't value the trees. And I, I'm, I'm glad you've mentioned this because originally, originally there was a green belt that stretched from Bowie all around Accra to the Archwater Forest, um, then Gimpa, Legon, Atomic Energy, all around the Green Belt. This is from uh, pre Nkrumah times. That Green Belt is gone. You go, you go to uh, people's houses, and as you said, they have cut every tree and paved the thing with paving or even tiles. So I don't think this is a, a matter of uh, leadership. This is a matter of common sense. The trees are giving you life, and you're just decimating them. And it's all over, as you said. And in places where you think that they'll grow trees. Now, I don't know if the cutting around the, the courts was a security matter, but even if there's a security matter, that they won't clear line of sight or why or whatever. I can't comment on that. But please, when you cut the tree, plant another tree there. At Ligon, we've planted several, uh, by now, hundreds of thousands of trees over the past 10 years and 15 years. But it's because we don't value them. That, that, that's it. In fact, I can tell you, Bernard, uh, when we were putting up one of our buildings, they were trying to pull down a tree I contacted the vice chancellor at that time, the proper chancellor, that they want to pull this tree. He said, "Stop work," and we had to move the building, the plan of the building, by about five meters, so that tree would be preserved. The tree is wow. still standing with the marks of the bulldozer uh, on it. We don't value it. Wow. It's as simple as that. But will one person planting a tree make a difference? Sometimes people wonder whether oh, individual efforts like, oh, let me plant three trees in my house, will that make a difference in this concrete jungle called Accra? Bernard, you know, we have something called the tipping point. I, I, I think I've mentioned this to you before. When we have this, uh, you know, what they call seesaw. Uh, the seesaw up and down. Everything is in a certain balance. And if you load that balance on one side too much, it cannot come back. It just can't come back. It gets stuck there. So every little positive thing that we do, no matter how small, is something that contributes to a bigger whole. And you don't know if that little thing that you do as an individual has saved us from another heat wave. Um, we have something in mathematics called the butterfly effect, where a little thing done in one part of the world can translate into a major issue elsewhere. You mentioned El Nino. El Nino takes uh, place off the west coast of South America, but it affects us here in Ghana. So everything is linked. We can't do things in isolation. So if you as an individual do your little part as part of a greater effort, it all contributes positively. But, but Bernard, I, I want to talk also very briefly about this whole issue of climate resilience. Mm -hmm. And yeah, at Legon, what we are trying to do now is set up a climate resilience and sustainability uh, initiative where we'll have a, a, a futures lab where we try to anticipate what, where we are going because we can't always be relying on the Western countries to tell us what to do. They're not here with us. They don't know our problems. So we need to be as academics abreast of what is happening. I'm glad GMET is now better equipped than it was uh, 10, 20 years ago. But 
when you look at the density of weather stations that we have in the whole of Ghana, it's not even uh, Cape Town. Cape Town has more weather stations than the whole of Ghana. Wow. Yeah, we need to know what is going on. We need the data. Without the data, we cannot say this thing is happening or this is not happening. And and uh, and the, the, the thing is, when you're dealing with these averages and so forth, you know, you, you, an average is made up of a series of numbers. There's a low number, but there's also a high number. And, and we know that in Accra, there are some places where the localized heat index is around 60 degrees. It may last for only 10, 15 minutes, but that's how the temperature goes. <laughs> and it, it, it's funny that I, I I always paint the roof of my cars white because I did an experiment with one of my cars and I realized that the difference between a white roof on my car and a black roof equates to about four or five degrees change in the temperature in the car, which means I can run my AC in my car. Yes, I use an AC and I use an automatic car. I can run it at one instead of three. Less fuel consumption. As I said, little, little things we can do. Oh, but, but this is a serious hack you didn't tell me. And you let me keep my car black for years. I, I thought you were my friend. Uh, but, you should have told me. But, to... but Bernard, <laughs> oh, Pastor, but, Mr. But, Chris. Bernard, you, 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 did, you did integrated science. I did. At the time, it was called general <laughs> science. <laughs> general science, yes. These, these are things that uh, we need to do. In fact, we'll be running a, a meeting. I'll make sure I invite you people. Where you're looking at uh, the climate information generated by AI versus generated by Ghanaian experts to find out what the common man feels is the better answer towards getting some sort of app so you can query when when you have a climate question like 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 this you can query it but um, I just wonder uh, when when the power goes off how hot is your studio until the generator comes in it's extremely hot yeah so for me the solution is that you should have some solar panels with the automated system that switches it straight on before someone has to go and press switch to uh, switch on your 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 generator mm. but 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 you see as i said all the comments that have been made so far on this program have been valid from a variety of individuals. So if we know what to do, why are we not practicing it ourselves? And the last point on the water, which I, I took, I've noticed that when you cannot afford sachet water because it's now consuming too much of your daily budget, so you imagine a man with a wife, uh, four children, each drinking uh, six of those uh, a day, you know, that, that adds up to a lot of money per month. The third thing is that you go for water that is not portable, and then you end up with problems of uh, intestinal you know, diarrhea and so forth. We'll actually have a project looking at that, the link between climate change and diarrhea along the coast. Mm. And finding that because of change, changes in spending, household spending, and the reliance on non-portable sources, people are getting sick. What does that mean? Children out of school, parents who cannot go to work because they have to look after uh, children, parents who are sick, they cannot earn money. Everything is linked. Mm. Prof, thank you. I will, I will paint the top of my car white and plant two more trees in my house. No, only two, more, more, more. Maybe four more. More. Thank you. Thank you. That was Professor, Chris, you. Professor Chris Gordon. Always good to talk to him. I call him an integrated scientist, an environmental scientist with special interest in biodiversity and function of coastal wetlands, but he's done so much work in, um, I mean, he's worked on the National Environmental Action Plan, Ghana's Water Policy. He's worked on uh, all kinds of things. National Climate Change Master Plan, National Climate Change and Green Economy Learning Strategy, He's worked on our biodiversity policy. 
environmental management policy, all kinds of things. Great guys to talk to. His research interests include earth system governance, sustainability science, mm. ecotoxicology, mm -hmm. climate change adaptation, environmental policy. Right guy to talk to. Sky. Fine brain. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you see, the, 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 everything he said, very much on point. Mm. All the great things they have produced for us. Mm. The question is whether the people in charge of implementing policy look at these hard things and say, look, mm. let's give the effect to them. It would seem that no. Because, first of all, if we were managing our environmental uh, spaces or what you call environment properly, mm -hmm. Galante wouldn't be a problem. Oh, my God. People in those communities will know that because as far back as, you know, JSS and second is we're told that green earth, if the last three dies, the last man dies. That was yeah. a principle. Now we have. But do we believe it? Clearly we have, not. We have to believe it. I, I actually think from what you are saying about God, I'm saying what he said about cutting down trees. Mm. I think the citizenry have also not been properly educated on some things. This yeah, point you made about cut the last tree. Mm. We are told in school. Yes. But the way people cut down trees, I don't think they believe it. I don't think they actually believe that if you cut down the last few, the last man, they don't, they don't. Then there's a problem. They don't. Because if you are a chief, if you are a community leader, <laughs> if you are a common citizen in that community, mm. and you watch bulldozers move into the community every single day. To, to come and do the havoc they do. Challenge, destroy and, the trees. I know kill. Calam says also social because Adam was telling me that now, when the money comes, so the boys come with yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. And the social issues, young girls are getting pregnant. The whole community is in a mess, and they spend all the money in the town and move to the on next. booze and chicks, yeah. and then they move to the next town. So it's not as if they're even using the money to do like building a house or anything. So you have like these jam fans that they bring hundreds of people come into a town. They enter the forest reserve. They do the galamse. They, they destroy the forest. They destroy the water body. They destroy the human population. It's terrible, and they move to another town, and the people follow them there because new new guys have come with new money, and we are watching on because of votes. I I I can I can get it, because all these fine policy documents that have been produced, the expectation is that they will be put into action, and the constitution itself mm -hmm. empowers us mm -hmm. to manage our environment sustainably. So you ask yourself, why can't I mean the people in charge? Why can't they give effect to these things? They will say the citizens are not interested. Sometimes, you know, it's a double way sword. I think the leaders have a role to play, a big role to play. But sometimes citizens themselves, because guys, even your own house, the way you, you, you allow it to be built for you, you know, you remove all the grass, you mm -hmm. put concrete, you cut down all the trees. Mm -hmm. You know, you are, I mean, you are changing all your green parks into astroturfs, for God's sake. Like, we, we have become so artificial and plastic that it's even showing the way we build. There's something fundamental. I think the software in Ghana has been corrupted. The mindset of Ghanaians. Let's hear some comments mm. on heat and cars and rains. 054-998-6996. Later this morning, I'll bring you highlights of an interview we had with Professor Raymond Natuguba. Right. We spoke on the big issue on law and ethics yeah, and custom. culture mm. and tradition mm. and custom. Brilliant interview with Salam Adonu. I'll bring you highlights shortly, but let's hear some comments. Good morning, Bernard. Morning. Thank God it rained this morning. As a result, the weather is cool and okay. For mm. those of us who uh, sweat profusely, the hot weather is dealing brutally with oh. us. Hopefully, I wouldn't need to rely on my newly found hack. Eyes blocked with face towel just to maintain body temperature while oh. walking in the sun. The heat oh. is that serious already for some of us. Swansea, mm. you know, so send us through. Good morning, Bernard, Morning. the heat is just unbearable. We've all developed heat <laughs> rashes in the house. Jones at the boy. Bernard, to understand why humidity causes you to feel hotter, you must understand how the body cools. Evaporating sweat removes heat from the body, making you cool. Humidity means there is more water in the air, reducing evaporation Ooh. as the air can take less water. So body heats up. Thank you, Engineer no, Daniel. You, this is the best explanation I've received. Mm. Read that again. Let me read it again. Mm -hmm. So you must understand how the body cools. Evaporating sweat removes heat from the body, mm -hmm. making you cool. Humidity means there is more water in the air. Already. Reducing evaporation as the air can take less water. Mm -hmm. So your so body, your body when you are hot, you sweat. When you sweat, when you sweat, you sweat the evaporation heat. of the sweat. Mm -hmm causes you to cool, cool. Mm -hmm. right okay now 
the air needs the water from your body through the sweat that it evaporates. Yeah. But if the air is already humid, the ability of the air to evaporate the sweat from you reduces. Yeah. So the, the sweat yeah. stays with you yeah. for longer. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's why you have a lot of... In Ghana, when you run, so you sweat. Challenge. Like, you can wear the same shirt in Buckingham. Yeah, and there's nothing behind the neck yeah. because there's no sweat. Mm -hmm. Because the water from your body is quickly evaporated by the environment. Mm -hmm. But here, it causes you to it's sweat more. Because the air doesn't need the water. It already has enough water. It doesn't need yours. Mm. And so plus, it's, it's balanced. That's how God has designed it. If you add uh, anthropogenous activities, people are burning. So yeah. there is always smoke. Mm -hmm. There is always some mm -hmm. sooth in the air, mm -hmm. particles over there, and it's deteriorating the air quality that we have better. Mm -hmm. So that was Daniel Allen. Yeah, Daniel Allen from Medina. All the trees along the motorway have been fell. They said they are doing motorway expansion. Okay. I mean, so there is a very common sense. <laughs> no, 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 so the, the motorway, they had, they had, they had a reservation between the motorway and the residences, uh -huh. but the reservation has been sold to put yeah. to build shops. Oh, you see, so the reservation is gone. So you see, so it, it, everything is interlinked. Charlie? Our problems are just like some it's just like a can of worms right so the worms are intertwined like mm -hmm. they they connected to each other in a way yeah. that's the it's, i, I it's can't terrible. get it it's, it, it's terrible bernard oh, oh, ghana's air quality is 49.6 times higher than the who annual air quality guideline value when you say air quality is higher yes what you mean so it bad says bad. the current PM 2.5. This is a uh, particulate matter 2.5 oh. concentration in the greater Christ 11 times above the recommended limits given by the WHO. Mm -hmm. What this simply means is that we point. have a concentration of um, dust, soot, dirt, smoke, and liquid droplets with a diameter of 2.5 micrometers or less so all this you know our so the film yes our air is more polluted that's than all it's globally exactly allowed. all right exactly. more comments good morning bernard morning my ceiling fan was blowing hot air mm -hmm. so i bought an ac and the prepaid purchase now is killing my pocket mm -hmm. ecg needs to check the technology used to pre use uh, in their prepaid meters mm -hmm. because the consumption is abnormal mm -hmm. my electricity expense has increased from 200 cities a month before ac to 600 cities a month with ac mm. i use the air conditioner only from 7 p.m to 4 a.m daily george from airport city mm. maybe you need to what check trees is, that, is, it, is it a new ac and is it sometimes when the devices are old they consume more and That's maybe true. the type of this ac it is That's as well true. what is the epa doing Citizens are cutting down trees indiscriminately in our neighborhoods, mm -hmm. communities, etc., with no tangible reasons, while the EP and city authorities <laughs> look on unconcerned. Oh. To tell you the truth, Accra stinks mm -hmm. and the air is stable. Like the documentary. It's still. It's still. Like the documentary you aired a moment ago, Accra is literally becoming a concrete jungle. In La Cote d'Ivoire, no citizen can cut down a tree without notifying the city authority. Mm. These are critical issues the EPA must mm. deal with alongside illegal mining activities. Mm. Benny from Tema. Thank Bernard you. and team, mm? good morning. Mm. Hey, the heat in Tamale, mm. coupled with the Dem uh, Ramadan, it's not for children. It's not for children. <laughs> it's not children at all. I pray we change our attitude, which affects the climate negatively. We should plant more trees mm -hmm. day in day out. Trees are uprooted by roadsides uh, for home constructions, etc. Mm -hmm. But they never get replaced. Do you even have an EPA? Do we even have an EPA? And what do they do concerning climate change and its effect in our homes, mm -hmm. Abdul? Listening from Tamale. All right. Good morning, Bernard morning. and team. For three days, uh, for the past three days, my two children sleep in my car hey. just because of the heat. Hey. On the fourth night, we had to go to a hotel, only hey. to be told two hours later that the lights were back in the area. Hey. It's very serious. So heat plus light out or do so. Uh, you sleep Imagine in the car. Yeah. Aren't because there mosquitoes there? No, but when so the AC is on, on the and AC. then it you put on AC sleep in your car. Yeah. Wow. That's what he's doing, it would seem. <laughs> hey, this man. Because it's, the lights are out. The window he has in his house. If you are down Luba Blitz, just open it. For all you know, it's a rented apartment. He has no control over how to, you know, allow air in or not. You out. find that many of the babies have heat rashes. It's terrible. Yeah. It's More comments. Mm. Bernard. Mm -hmm. Tamale Central Hospital. There is a big tree in front of the fence. I don't know who said they should cut it. Oh, so oh, they cut it? Don't tell me they did. You say I'm so annoyed. 
Oh, more which comments means on this. Is gone. Mm. We are cutting trees and clearing all the mountains. Mm. The Abokobi area is all turned into an estate development now. As much as the citizens must be responsible, the authorities should wake up from this from their sleep. Mm. When the heat subsides with the coming of the rains, we will have flood to deal with. We are not going anywhere. With our disrespect for the environment. Oh, Pukua. Pukua. Say it, say it again. Ah, so the question is, can we build around it? We can. That's, There's that's, a way to build way into to the that environment that's yeah. sustainable. But we do it haphazardly. <laughs> we do it very, very haphazardly. Oh, my word. This is... 0549986996. Let's do a quick round of announcements. And then we'll come back to another issue for the morning... Let's, 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 let, let me, Bernard, if you would kindly indulge me. So let me read this one. So this request is coming in from uh, Jada, Joel, Jaden, and Raquel. Uh, they are saying that they are wishing their mother, mommy, we wish you long life and continuous favor from God. Happy birthday. And they are celebrating their mother, Sheila Elikem Atta Sefako. Sheila Elikem Safako Atta, they are celebrating. Right. And let me also add this one. Happy birthday to Nyami Ani Nana Ousu Bafo Iwajima from your uncle Dominic Safo in Atlanta, Georgia, USA. Happy birthday to Madame Philippa Irenchi Adade of Spotlight on Style, Fashion and Decor, Obuasi Gausu Market. May the good Lord bless and protect you on your special day. Wishing you long life and good health and prosperity from Paul Gideon, Abigail, and the whole family. Uh, let's hear some quick announcements. We'll Bernard, is Doomso back? Mm. Oh, yeah. Are you paying too much for electricity? Yeah. Mm. Is your business crumbling because of the high cost of unreliable power and constant increase in electricity tires? Yes. Mm. Get a world-class tried and tested solar solution from Ghana's number one solar company, Translite Solar Limited, at very affordable prices. Mm. With Translite Solar Systems, you save on the cost of electricity and get consistent supply of power. Mm. Translite Solar's invest and lithium ion batteries work with the sun to provide reliable power at a cheaper cost for your home mm. and your business. So install a system from Translite Solar and enjoy uninterrupted power supply. Locate us at 98 Boundary Road, East Legon, in between ARS and the American House at the White House bus stop. Call us now 0504-249-229 or 0206-542-242. Four five four or visit www.translitesolar.com for early bed deals. Reach us via email at o r h i n r at translitesolar.com. Wherever there is sunlight, there is translight. And Chartered Professional Courses Cracks Training Institute brings you a world of opportunities with their Chartered Professional Certifications. Enhance your career and be recognized globally with a Chartered Program that distinguishes you from the crowd. Options available inclu- include Chartered Financial Risk Manager, Chartered Forensic uh, Financial Auditor, Data Analyst, Human Resource Management, logis- Procurement and Logistics, Chartered Oil and Gas Professional, Digital Marketing, master project and all these are chartered programs so cracks training institute offers you the kids mba program accredited by the abe uk aimed at children aged 10 to 17 the kids mba program enhances critical thinking teamwork creativity and self-confidence among its graduates it also provides real world business skills to complement traditional education addressing the lack of formal business education for kids so contact cracks training now on 055 Two one seven or zero two four three four five seven three three nine or visit www.cracks spelt with an x dot edu dot gh for more details. Are you young? Seeking stable, fulfilling employment. Look no further than the Ghana Goals Program brought to you by the MasterCard Foundation in collaboration with Springboard Roadshow Foundation and Limehouse. Ghana Goals ignites hope and guides you towards career opportunities in agriculture, agribusiness, technical and vocational skills. Whether you're 15 or 35, male or female, this program equips you with the skills to thrive, gain access to career guidance, counseling and essential skills training. Join us and contribute to Ghana 
Ajumakum's growth through careers in agriculture and ATVET. Ajumakum embraced her Greek and ATVET careers with Ghana Grows, an initiative of Mastercard Foundation in partnership with Springboard Roadshow Foundation and Limehouse. For more information, call 0308255775. And whether you are an importer or exporter or involved in any form of international trade, Bank of Africa is here to provide all the needed support to make your cross-border trade transactions seamless. With presence in over 30 countries across Africa, Asia, North America and uh, Europe, we are well positioned to provide advisory and financial support to you. We provide tailor-made finance solutions such as warehousing, financing, discounting of receivables, uh, local and offshore guarantees, remittance of export proceeds across the Waimu region, and more. Call us on 0302-429-333 or 0302-249-690 or go to our website or social media pages for more information. Bank of Africa, the African bank with global reach. Bank of Africa, as strong as a group, as close as a partner. Now, if you're looking for great water for your home or for your office or for a special occasion, Standard Water is exactly what you need. They are in 11 regions and they are expanding and they have over 25 years of experience providing quality and refreshing water to quench your thirst. Call them on 0202055703 or 0547334385 and this ad is FDA approved. Now, the Institute of Paralegal Training and Leadership Studies is your foremost trainer in the practice and professional certification in ADR and other professional programming. Now they are calling and they're asking people to come and sign up for their latest program, which is the IPLS Professional Executive Certificate in ADR, which takes only six weeks to qualify, or the IPLS Professional Executive Master in ADR, which takes 20 weeks to qualify. And after that, you become an ADR uh, professional in Ghana and beyond. Visit them. Um, at the Alfanko Barrier Campus opposite Silicon Valley School off Accra and Sawam Road or call them on 0303-960-798 or 0509-63402. IPLS is your home of contemporary conflict resolution studies. A few more comments before we take our next <coughs> breather yes. and... Uh, we're here are more comments, hmm. Caleb. Good morning, Bernard. Please, have you considered torture drivers? All of them are using manual cars with no AC. So, mm. are you sure of the award you want to give to those using manual cars <laughs> with no AC cars? Mm. You know, especially when you sit in the front seat, you can feel the heat from <laughs> under the tent. <laughs> when you put By the time you go get down, he boil you. Mm. <laughs> hey Bernard, lift in Ghana. I rented my pickup out to a company in Accra and two weeks panel I pulled out of the contract company Punyu Nanka individual. So you see our mm. attitude makes it difficult for some business mm. models to thrive. Mm. And we all suffer for it. We, are, we don't care about anybody's property. We are very poor at maintenance. Mm. And that's how some of these things keep happening. Good morning, Bernard and team. I drive a manual car without AC in Tamale. Just imagine the heat. Man, you buy a new car. <laughs> ASAP, but the cost of cars these days. Man for buy new car ASAP, but the cost of cars these days. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Guys, Ghanaians now will rent your car and even go and sell it to car dealers. Oh. Now, uh, now, okay, we've gone beyond returning the car with lots of issues. Mm. Good morning. Good morning. Mm. I, I normally open my windows in the morning for fresh air, but this morning, when I opened the window, OMG, the heat was unbearable, but God being so good, it rained. Mm. It ran from Lakeside. Mm -hmm. We were consuming four dispenser bottles of water in a month. These past two months, we consumed the same yeah. amount in a week. Uh, yes. Some days. You know, we buy water dispenser at home. He's right. We spend, we drink a lot mm. more water. Yeah, because of the heat. Cool. And because the heat. kids are on vacation, cool ah, the they're more <laughs> drinking, more they are power. drinking uh, like locust. <laughs> <laughs> this one is asking, it's from Kweku, it says, couldn't they, talking about the Ministry of Roads and Highways, have extended the motorway vertically using a flyover hmm. with slipways instead hmm. of horizontally sure. and destroying the vegetation and paying compensation to property owners whom we allowed to include the reservation? Hmm. It's a very important question that is coming in. Hmm. The question is, hmm. did they think about it? Good question. But uh, my friend Sika Antobre has sent me a photo of trees that have just been recently fell along East Lagos. He says oh. this is East Legon, American house towards Medina Estate, oh. just opposite the Shell Fuel Station. Someone decided to cut the trees down. Oh. I don't know who checks these indiscriminate oh. cuttings. Oh. What use is 
aid uh, to plant up. trees in June every year, only for individuals to cut them down after oh. a few years to build oh. shops. Oh. And they're going to put chaos canteens on the pavement. It's terrible. Oh. More comments. Bernard, what you were saying, hmm, mm. my future father-in-law praised me yesterday for driving a manual car. Mm. And by the way, I have a <laughs> hey, It's economical to use it. Wait until okay, you Daniel, move the plot Daniel, and then you move the gear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good morning, Bernard. I drive a Chevrolet Cruze manual. My AC works, but I don't use it. How okay. can you use it? Okay. <laughs> my petrol is 14.15. Oh, my God. <laughs> How I manage the current high temperature is that I put uh, 750 ml or one liter water bottle in a deep freezer. I carry one along to work and sip on it as it thaws. This helps to... Uh, cool. Keep me cool. I drive a 2.4 liter automatic Jeep uh, Patriot with AC, which I turn on only on request of my wife. For the top of my money. 2.4, that's, that's quite big. Yes, you from Sakumoto. What is advisable is that you should do something around 1.8 these days or mm. below yeah. because Charlie, cost of fuel is always. Mm. More comments. <laughs> Bernard, good morning. I drive a 1993 Opel Vectra in mm. this Accra and a me. It only came with the fun and no AC. <laughs> and even the AC no longer functions. It is my, fun. Uh, yeah. My mechanic has money to damage the blower. Lately, uh, it all adds Due up to Due to the all heat. this heat, I drive with only my vest on to work and yeah. put on my shirt in the car park. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> on days, I don't do that. I, I get, get to work dripping, dripping sweat in sweat. Oh, and Charlie. my shirt well soaked too. The oh, weather is crazy. crazy. If you can't even use bicycle to wear, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no because don't it, try, don't dream it. <laughs> <laughs> a few more comments, Bernard and team. I have a nine month old and a five year old. When there is doom, I have to put on the AC in my car to get them to cool down so they can fall asleep. Yeah, bro, oh, a Charlie. serious government could remove taxes on solar systems so as many people can go up the grid. But alas, a rabbit from solar. I agree oh, with Charlie. this. Having so I have solar in my house and it helps. I have the fan working and the the fan and then the light. Mm. So at least the that kids can sleep. Fan. No, the they are normal fan. So the solar, solar system box. can power when the light goes up, the solar system can power the fan mm. and light. Mm -hmm. It can't put on the AC. Yeah, unless you increase the capacity. Yeah, but what I have is good enough. Good morning, better than team. Uh, 15 years ago, my grandma fought with people in my area never to cut down the only tree in my area. And now in the night, people call the tree hotel. When is it do the work? People go and sit under the tree. A brand here, Jojo from Greta Estate. Wow. So now the tree is the hotel. Good morning, team. Guys, have you been to Akosombo? If you don't want to go to hell, then visit Akosombo for a slight taste of heat. I officiated a wedding there this weekend. I used three handkerchiefs. <laughs> By the time I was done preaching for 15 minutes, my character with a t-shirt was fully soaked. I looked like I just been picked from a water pool. Mm -hmm. Guess what? The host pastor walked in. He had four towels. He had never warned me to come prepared. I think we were explaining wearing this. Suit. When you have water... There's humidity. When you have humidity, mm -hmm. the ability of the air to absorb your sweat is reduced mm -hmm. and therefore your heat remains in you. Mm -hmm. Whereas in a drier place, your the evaporation of your sweat yes. mm -hmm. makes you cool faster. 